Imagine spending your entire adolescent life with 200 of your siblings. You eat together, you rest together, you basically do everything together. Now imagine entering adulthood with a non-functional mouth only to die four days later of starvation. Well, this is a reality for the forest tent caterpillar. Unlike other insects that may have stingers or pincers, forest tent caterpillars don't have much to protect themselves against predators, so it's extremely important that they stay in large groups, taking a sort of safety in numbers approach as caterpillars are constantly eating just to transform into a moth and then mate. To give an example of what damage this causes, in 2001, these caterpillars were responsible for damaging over 21 trillion trees across North America. I'm interested in how their grouping, cha uh, grouping behavior changes depending on what they're eating and how these changes can help with future forest management plans. So what I was expecting was to have big, happy caterpillars feeding on aspen. Aspen leaves are nutritious, the caterpillars are growing quickly, so they have no reason to leave their family. But then we have sad, miserable caterpillars feeding on maples. Maple leaves aren't as nutritious, the caterpillars are growing slowly, so which scenario is preferred? Scenario one, stay with the family and take advantage of the safety and numbers approach, but potentially starve. Or scenario two, leave the family, maybe find better food, but risk encountering a predator. So should they stay or should they go? To, fig to figure this out, I conducted two research experiments. My first experiment took place in a laboratory. There I was, a new eager master student taking care of 50 caterpillar families, and all but one family contracted the nuclear polyhydrosis virus, which is just as bad as it sounds. I just happened to be extremely unlucky. The virus essentially liquefies the caterpillar, which sounds like something that comes straight out of a horror movie. My second experiment fared much better. I spent about a month in the forest observing caterpillars in more of a natural setting, and most importantly, this time, they did not liquefy. <laughs> what I found was from the two scenarios, these caterpillars prefer the second. So when eating a non-nutritionist food, they'd rather leave their family, maybe find something better, but risk encountering a predator. Forest managers can use these findings, along with what we already know about the caterpillars, to help predict future outbreaks and create better management plans. Instead of managing entire forests, managers can focus on smaller areas that have a higher concentration of the caterpillar's favorite food, and let nature take its course on other trees, since we know these caterpillars naturally put themselves in harm's way. This could shorten outbreaks, create less forest damage, and be potentially less harmful to other life forms that are sometimes unintentionally harmed during the process. Now, there are signs that a new forest tent caterpillar outbreak is approaching. With better management plans, you won't have to worry. <laughs>